The inflation numbers are in and it's not pretty. We have headlines. March inflation hit 8.5%. Consumer price inflation hit a new 40-year high. Prices rose sharply amid concerns about an economic slowdown and inflation rose at fastest pace since 1981. This is the data that was just released for March of 2022, now on April 12th. And what this is signaling and bringing fears about is a possible recession. And so in this video, I'm gonna put forth a very bold strategy that I am doing that is the very opposite of what the experts recommend to do during a recession. And I'm gonna show you why I am doing that. And so before I get into this video, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. It's always good to get a different viewpoint, which I provide, and I provide quality content, transparency. I show my portfolio, my strategies. So be sure to subscribe and thank you to all those who are subscribed. So let's start with the very basics. What is a recession? Well, a recession is commonly defined as at least two consecutive quarters of declining GDP after a period of growth. More formally, the National Bureau of Economic Research defines a recession as a significant decline in economic activity spread across the economy, lasting more than a few months, normally visible in real gross domestic product, GDP, real income, employment, industrial production, and whole sell retail sales. And so how I like to think of a recession is a correction after a hot economy. And prior to 2022, we saw a stock market that was hitting records consistently. We saw, you know, the housing market was super hot. We saw prices of these of houses going up like crazy massively where that was in everyone's conversation basically. We had record low interest rates, which allowed a lot of companies, individuals to borrow money and invest that right back into the economy. So, you know, that was the hot economy. So could this be the correction, the recession? I think it's more likely going to happen than not, but we can't predict that, of course. But we can look at prior times where after a hot economy, we saw a recession, like the 2001 uh, tech bubble. The assets of these tech companies were super inflated and therefore the, the burst happened, right? The recession right after that. In 2008, we had excess debt out in the market, which led to the housing crisis. And so this could potentially be us going into one soon, but we won't know that till the data is released later on. But what the experts are saying is to invest in safe assets. So those that do very well during a recession, such as, such as communication companies, you know, everyone's gonna pay their internet bill that monthly bill, no matter if there's a recession or not. Companies like that are what economists are saying to go towards uh, if a recession happens because they're things that people will still need to pay for regardless if the economy is doing well or not. But I have a different strategy. My strategy is to move away from safe companies during a recession and go into growth companies, quality growth companies, and I'm going to explain why. So if we look at uh, this chart right here, this shows that recessions are painful, but expansions have been powerful. So during the average economic expansion, it lasted 69 months and the GDP growth was 24.7%. And there was about 12 million jobs on average added during these times of uh, expansion. Now the recessions uh, in purple, you'll notice that expansion is in the blue green, but the recessions usually lasts on average 11 months and the GDP growth goes down uh, about 1.8% and we lose about 1.9 million jobs. So the reason why I am not moving to safe stocks is for a few things. If you look at this chart, the recession is in purple and look at the little blips that they are followed by huge massive growth. To me, if I'm a long-term investor, I am not gonna move into safe stocks that will last me um, some protection for 11 months when I could be investing in growth, solid quality growth companies that after recession are gonna provide me 69 months worth of excellent returns. This to me is just something that should only be done if you're close to retirement and you wanna protect your money. But why would you move into safer stocks for an average of an 11 month recession when immediately following that, when none of us can predict that, that we're gonna see some pretty um, awesome growth in the stock market, in, these, in the economy. 
And so my strategy is not to move to safe stocks, to safe companies. It's to focus even more heavily on those growth companies that are going to be hit hard and that will recover and most likely go up massively after the recession is done. As we can see in this chart, what would you rather invest in? The purple sections or the blue and green sections? I rather prepare for those blue and green sessions when the economy right after a recession was super hot. Um, so I like this paragraph here. It says recessions are relatively small blips in, ec in economic history. Over the last 65 years, the U.S. has been in an official recession less than 15% of all months. Moreover, the net economic impact of most recessions have been relatively small. The average expansion increased economic output by 25%, whereas the average recession reduced GDP by less than 2%. Equity returns can even be posited positive over the full length of a contraction since some of the strongest stock rallies have occurred during the late stages of a recession. So we could be in a recession right now. We could be towards the end of it, which means we could see a turnaround soon in the stock market if that's where we're at. But let's say we're going into recession and we see even more declines in the stock market. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that when you see charts like this and data like this where right after a recession, we see a huge economic output, a huge increase in, in you know, these companies and their economic growth. This is something that I was looking at and looking at that graph, I just, I was like, why would I focus on 11 months rather than 69 months? And these little blips of recessions don't have, happen often. And when they do, they really don't put that much negativity on the economy Rather, it's what happens afterwards that I want to focus on, those huge um, growth periods of the economy that last for much longer and take over much more of the time period of the stock market of the economy over time. So I'm going to be focusing on quality growth companies that have good cash flow, a strong balance sheet, and long growth runways. That's what I am going to do. I do want to show this uh, other chart that I found. It says, equities typically peak months before a recession, but can bounce back quickly. And this little paragraph underneath is super important. Aggressive market timing moves, such as shifting an entire portfolio into cash, can backfire. Some of the strongest returns can occur during the late stages of an economic cycle or immediately after a market bottom. It, it, it's often better to stay invested to avoid missing out on the upswing. This is just advice that cannot be repeated enough. Too many times I see people get fearful, they sell out of their portfolios, go into cash or go into safe stocks, and they miss out on these huge um, gains that occur after a downturn. You look at the stock market um, and any kind of dip, crash, what happens afterwards? It goes up massively. This is something why I am focusing on these growth stocks instead of going into safe uh, companies, safe stocks, because what happens afterwards is much greater of an effect than what happens during that small time of a recession. And so do not sell out of your portfolios. Too many of my friends uh, and people that I know have done that and they just regret it. I don't think I know one person that has successfully done that in a, in a strategy where they sold out um, kind of at you know a point before it dropped off and bought in at the bottom. You can't time the market. You cannot. It's It's like gambling. You just can't predict what's going to happen. So instead, what we do see from the data is that what happens after recession is the market goes onto a growth frenzy. And that's something that I want to focus on. What companies are going to really uh, be able to take advantage of that growth? Um, and so if we uh, also, I just want to bring this up, you know, you're going to see things like this in the news. Here are the sectors that are going to do well during a recession. Be sure to focus on these and stay out of the other ones, right? So we have the ones that do well um, in the recession, such as utilities, consumer staples, uh, communication services, energy. If you look at a lot of these companies that are in these sectors, their growth over their history, um, it struggles. I mean, look at AT&T, look at utility companies. Um, you know, even a lot of the healthcare companies there isn't that high growth. Uh, the energy sector, right? That's been a roller coaster ride. 
But if you focus on more of what they're saying to stay out of, like information technology and financials, that is where we have seen uh, great growth and, 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 dis and consumer discretionary as well. These are uh, sectors that I think I'm going to focus on rather than what will fare well during 11, an average of 11 months of recession. I rather focus on the other half that fare excellent during 69 months on average of an economic uh, boom. Again, I think what my strategy is, what my convic conviction is right now, is regardless if we go into recession now or in a year, you know, when I see the market going down, I'm going to continue investing in quality growth uh, companies, ones that pay dividends, ones that don't, because long term, these companies have been the ones that have shown to output a lot of growth for investors. The companies that I kind of were researching, like what could really do well after a recession when people are back to spending, the economy's hot again. So I chose uh, looks like five companies here that I think will do very well. And then I have one company that I don't think will do well. And it's something that I own, actually. So we're going to start with, and this is just going to be quick. We're going to start with Amazon. I think this will be a company that will do well after a recession. The things that I look at are mainly its cash flow. It has an operating cash flow of, or, of over $46 billion. Now that net cash flow, I don't pay attention to because that's just the activity, right? whatever they're bringing in and spending, it's just the net of that. But these companies are bringing in you know, a lot of cash. It's okay that they're spending more than what they're bringing in for a quarter because they could stop that and make that 46 billion just in that quarter if they wanted to stop all spending. That's the power of companies like Amazon with these huge cash flows that makes them super uh, powerful for investors because they are going to be able to make moves when others cannot in a recession. But after recession, they are going to be able to benefit because Amazon, you know, many people after recession are going to be buying uh, a lot more than they did before. So I think Amazon is widely used to buy products. So I think this is a company that will benefit massively. Uh, its debt to assets is 67%, but the debt to me you have to read it beyond the percentage because debt is not necessarily a bad thing if they're utilizing it in a positive way. I see Amazon growing massively. So they built a massive distribution center on the west side of Albuquerque here in my home city, in my hometown. And you know they're not going to be investing heavily in huge centers like that across the nation and world if they're not expecting huge future growth, right? So I said the one thing is long growth runways. I think Amazon has that. And then they also have the Amazon Web Services, which, you know, after a recession, I think companies will, you know, start investing more heavily into cloud-based services. And Amazon is number one in the cloud services sector. So Amazon, I think, will do extremely well. Another one that I think will do really well is Microsoft. Now, Microsoft, as we all know, is a very quality company. They bring massive cash flow in of $39 billion. They're getting into gaming. The spending on gaming will increase. You know, they have their own cloud Azure, which is in second place behind Amazon. So I like that aspect of Microsoft as well. Uh, companies will be spending more on their cloud infrastructure. Uh, so Microsoft, I think with its uh, subscription, it's focusing more on subscription-based services. It's just gonna, they're gonna have more people subscribing to those services. Um, I think this company also is going to do really well with its products like Teams and Office 365. There was a recent article saying that that might slow down. It might, but after this uh, economic slowdown, these inflation, these inflation numbers go down, I think Microsoft will benefit massively because they have that cash flow to pivot and focus more on where they think that growth will be. Uh, another company that I think will do very well is Vici. Now, Vici uh, does have positive cash flows of almost a billion. They're at uh, 896 million. To me, the one thing with Vici is most of their properties are on the Vegas Strip. The one city that will benefit after a recession is going to be Vegas, and it will roar back like never before, I have a feeling. They've invested massively on that strip so much. And so I think Vici's one that will do excellent and that I will be willing to put a lot of my money in right now right now that there's all these fears of recession, high uh, interest rates, 
because after that dust settles, a company like Vici is gonna be able to profit uh, really well long-term because Vegas, I feel, will be around long-term. So there again is that long growth runway that I am looking at. And the same for Microsoft, very long growth runway. Another one that you know some people may or may not agree is Home Depot. Um, now they have huge cash flows as well, 16 and a half billion. Uh, right now they do have a little bit too much debt for my liking, but what I'm focusing on again is what's happening after the recession. People will start spending again a lot of money to fix up their homes. Contractors will be contacted to work on people's homes and they'll be spending money at places like Home Depot. So Home Depot is one that I think will uh, absolutely benefit after a recession and one that I will focus on. Again, with Home Depot though, that I think it has that long growth runway because this is uh, Amazon proof. So I kind of like it with a mix with Amazon in my portfolio. Um, Amazon I do not have in my portfolio, but Microsoft, Vici, and Home Depot I do. Amazon I'm looking into possibly getting in and I will let you guys know. But Home Depot I do think has a long growth runway as it is investing in technology. It is expanding. And I think uh, they are uh, more popular than Lowe's in my opinion. Uh, I think their prices are lower for consumers. And so I just think this is one that will benefit massively. Uh, lastly, uh, a company that I think will do really well after a recession is Google. They bring massive cash flow. Look at that, uh, $91.5 billion. So with, with Google, the thing that I think will be really good for them is more companies after recession will be willing to spend more on an advertisement, which brings in more ad revenue to a company like Google. So I think they will uh, benefit massively and I think they do have long growth runways. They also have a cloud segment, which is in third place, but I think they're focusing heavily on that. They have YouTube, which I think will be around for a very long time and they'll continuously improve that uh, they're the biggest and largest search, search engine out there, and I don't think that will slow down at all. So I do see a long growth runway with them as well, and I think they'll benefit massively after a recession. So Amazon, Microsoft, Vici, Home Depot, and Google are five companies I think during a recession when they're saying not to invest in companies like this, I think it's the perfect time to invest in companies like this because as their prices are going down after a short recession, What's gonna happen afterwards? I believe it's gonna be huge gains in the market for those who are invested in companies like this. Now, a company that we can see as an example that I don't think will do well is one that I own and that's Tattooed Chef. Now, they have negative cash flow, which isn't a good sign because, and, and they're new, so you, know, you have to take things with a grain of salt, but with a negative cash flow, uh, they aren't able to really pivot and, and focus on things like these other companies that have that cash flow. They're gonna be hit hard during a recession. Um, they do have low debt, which is good. It's kind of the offset of that, but this company has a lot left to go to become a profitable company. So definitely long-term for me, but it's not one I'm going to be putting money in. I'd rather put money in these other companies that, you know, they're saying to stay out of during a recession. So while everyone's out, I'll be getting in. And so after the recession, it will be going up because I think it's like a slingshot effect with these five companies I mentioned, they're going to be pulled back and then that slingshot's gonna be let go and you're gonna see these companies soar. My opinion, of course, I'd love to hear what you think of this video. Are you gonna move during a recession to safer stocks or do you think it's good based on what I presented to go into more of those growth quality companies um, that aren't considered the safe stocks right now? I think they are super safe and even though there might be a slight you know, kind of dip with these companies, long term, these will grow much more than these safe stocks that they're saying to move into right now. So let me know your thoughts or if you have any other companies you think you'll invest in or rather invest in during a recession. I appreciate you guys and I look forward to more fun uh, educational videos with my perspectives, your perspectives. Leave them down in the comments. I, I just love to read all the comments and we'll see you next time on Mark Arnold's Finance.